eight-year-old Asina Ducat lived in Upper Arlington, Ohio in 1980. She went by the nickname Sini. Sini left her home to go to school on June 3rd. She attended Barrington Elementary School. At 434, her parents reported her missing when she was still not home. The distance between their home and the school was 12 blocks, or about one mile. She always made a home before 4 p.m. Three hours later, Sini's body was found in a drainage ditch less than one block from her home. She suffered blunt force trauma to the head and manual strangulation. She had been beaten with a 20-pound limestone rock. Investigators believed that she was abducted and that her life was taken at a location other than where she was discovered. Sini's case shook the Columbus suburb and led the formation of the community-based group The Long Walk Home, the Asenath Ducat Project. The group formed and started aiding investigators in finding the person responsible. Recently, police re-examined every piece of DNA evidence taken from Sini's autopsy. On top of forensic examinations, Police conducted numerous interviews with previous persons of interest and former investigators connected to the case. Then, on August 11, 2022, the Upper Arlington Police Division announced the person responsible for what happened to Sini was a man named Brent L. Struttner. Struttner, who would have been 20 years old back in 1980, lived locally and had graduated from Upper Arlington High School in 1979, according to police. He took his own life in Columbus, Ohio in 1984 at the age of 24. Police Sergeant Brian McKean stated that they linked Struttner to the crime scene years ago, but it was advances in DNA and recent interviews that made police confident they had their man. We wanted to make sure all the pieces and parts were tied together before we released anything, said McKean. Struttner was a suspect long before we had the ability to identify him. Police Chief Steve Farmer said, Investigators for the Upper Arlington Police Division have tirelessly pursued justice for the Ducat family for more than four decades. I am the sixth chief to oversee these efforts and appreciate the hard work that has been put into this case through the years. Chief Farmer extended peace and healing to the Ducat family. Sini's friend Leslie Lyon reacted to the bittersweet news. Why did it have to happen in the first place, she said. This senseless, senseless thing. There will always be a sadness. The website, The Long Walk Home, The Asenath Ducat Project, has acknowledged the recent development but rejects the notion that the case has reached any semblance of finality. They believe that Brent Struttner did not act alone. They point to a man called Robert Chris Winchester. Winchester has committed similar crimes in the area and was a known associate of Struttner. Investigators are still looking for any link between Winchester and Sini's case. Forty-four-year-old Karen Johnson Swift lived in Dyersburg, Tennessee in 2011. She was married to David Swift. They had four children together. David was the last person to see Karen alive after she returned home from a Halloween party on the night of October 30, 2011. She was missing for over a month before hunters discovered her body in a cemetery near her home on December 10th of the same year. The autopsy report that was released stated Karen suffered blunt force trauma to the head. She was also found partially clothed and had other injuries at the time she was found. Investigators spoke with family and friends trying to find any useful information. Karen's friends told police that she was a good friend who was witty, kind, and strong-willed, except when it came to her husband, who always told her what to do. Investigators also found that Karen filed for divorce three weeks before she had disappeared. Finally, on August 9, 2022, David Swift was arrested in connection to the case. He was arrested in Alabama, where he now lives with his new wife. The arrest was made by members of the Dyer County Sheriff's Office, with assistance from the members of the Jefferson County, Alabama Sheriff's Office. Dyer County Sheriff Jeff Box said he was pleased after the grand jury announced an indictment against Swift on August 8th. He also said that he kept in touch with Karen's mother, Carol Johnson, throughout the years. As soon as David Swift was placed in handcuffs, I called Carol and told her the news. I always told her I had faith this case would be prosecuted, and today we had a very emotional conversation. She just wants justice for her daughter. Box said his office has literally spent thousands of hours on this case, and a lot of time was spent dispelling false information and rumors. 
Investigators never gave up and just kept going through the evidence. The one thing that held true since the early stages of the investigation was that David was always a suspect because all the evidence pointed to him. We were able to rule anyone and everyone else out and the grand jury made the right decision today by indicting him. I am so glad the district attorney, our prosecutor, had enough interest in the case to present it to the grand jury. I thanked District Attorney General Danny Goodman for seeing this through and he did the right thing today. Box did not specify what new evidence led to the arrest. If convicted, Swift faces up to life in prison without the possibility of parole. 36-year-old Jasmine Porter lived in the Bronx, New York City in 1996. She had a four-year-old son and was pregnant. On February 3rd, an unknown man entered her home and violently strangled her. Her body was found on February 5th. The four-year-old son was also found in their Morris Heights apartment. He was fortunately left unharmed by the perpetrator. Investigators found DNA under Jasmine's fingernails that belonged to the culprit. In 2021, with DNA technology being a lot more advanced than it was back in 1996, investigators submitted the DNA into the combined DNA index system. In 2022, investigators received results that it matched the DNA of 66-year-old Gregory Fleetwood. He was arrested at his home in the Bronx in August 2022. Fleetwood already had a history of violence toward women before he took Jasmine's life. In 1987, he was arrested and charged with manslaughter for strangling a woman he knew in the Bronx. He served seven years for that attack. The victim, Linda Miller, was also pregnant at the time. Fleetwood and Linda were what he called drug buddies. He took Linda's life and then called 911 to admit what had just happened. Fleetwood was released in August 1994, 18 months before he took Jasmine's life. Investigators said that Jasmine and Fleetwood did not know each other. They did not mention what the motive is. Fleetwood is currently proclaiming his innocence. I have never seen that woman before in my life, claimed Fleetwood. I don't know who that is. I have no explanation for why my DNA is under her fingernails. Even more damning though is that the investigators also found that Fleetwood's DNA was a match for an assault in the building next door to Jasmine's home about a month after her life was taken. Fleetwood faces a maximum of 25 years to life if convicted. New York Police Department Commissioner Kichant Sewell said, Not once in 26 years did detectives waver in their pursuit of justice for Jasmine and their dedication led to an arrest.